peace to the tribe, peace to the collective. It's Hood Mystic, representing hoodmystic.com, whiterabbitsite.com, and colombianexchange.com. Uh, first off, let me say it's the weekend, so you know we got our email only sale. Um, just DM me, I'll give you the link if you didn't get the email. And if you're interested, got any questions about psychedelics, just let me know. Give me one second, I'm about to shut my door, and I'll be right back. All right, so uh, I'm doing a video tomorrow, I would assume, uh, on uh, the title of the video that I'll be doing tomorrow and article is going to be called What Blocks Meditation, but uh, I didn't have enough time to finish it. Like, I'm not about to finish it tonight. I'll wake up and i um, meditate on it some more, finish it in the morning and send that out tomorrow and do a video tomorrow. And one of the things that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow is going to be the topic of this video, which is desire or desires. And I want to like flesh out this idea because when you talk about desires, people look at desires as something that is going to make it all better once you accomplish it or achieve it. And it really blocks us from meditation. You know, you could be in a good relationship, a good situation, but be so deep in your desires that you're not grateful for the present moment or the present reality of said relationships. So I'm a reference. Uh, <laughs> This book done been through the most, but favorite book of all time, Revelation of St. John by Zachary Lansdowne, chapter 13, Glamour and Maya. Now, every once in a while, like at least once a year, I got to talk about Glamour and I got to talk about Maya. I at least talk about it twice a year. Just because it's such a prevalent topic and it and it messes up a lot of people's spiritual development and spiritual growth. Even OGs in the spiritual community can fall victim to this particular concept because it's so pervasive and it's so sneaky that we can't really differentiate the forest from the trees when it comes to our spiritual life. So I'm not going to read the King James Version because I don't really have that to do. I'm going to read the psychological interpretation of verses chapter 13, verses one through four, maybe go through five, depending on how I feel. But I really just want to deliver a specific, clear message in relation to desires, right? Because a person, it no matter, right? A person can feel like they should follow their desires and whether or not you should follow your desires, like, I want you to just like think and have an open mind for a second and create a, a window between you, who you are as a spiritual being and what your ego wants, because what your ego wants is really not going to satisfy you when you move into the space of attraction and magnetism based upon your energy, which that's what you are, your energy. You're not the physical vessel. You're not what you want. You are pure energy and your desires in relation to the ego does not factor in your soul. So whether you're a spiritual person or a mundane person, a tall, short, fat, skinny, if you desire things in a space where you are a spiritual being and can attract things, whether you know it or not, because you desire things and you attract things, you're not getting the things that you want out of life because you desire them. You're getting them because you attract them. Anything negative that you experience is not because because you don't desire what you experience in negative, but you experience it anyway, 
because that's your magnetic force and your magnetic energy. And because you want things and you don't deal with your spiritual energy, it makes it to be a continuous cycle of negative energy and negative emotions and negative vibrations because a person can refuse to deal with their soul. Right? So let's just start with chapter 13, verse 1. From a position of detachment, the a spirit studies his emotional nature and learns about glamour, which is the aggregate of his emotional reactions. So let's deal with the um, footnotes. Whenever I read this book, I read the footnotes because it gives me a, a deeper understanding of exactly what I'm reading. And he goes on to say that emotional urges for expression of selfish desires right? This is what glamour represents. An emotional urge for expression of a selfish desire. Glamour, in its turn, veils and hides the truth behind the fogs and mists of feeling and emotional reaction, right? And it's like, if in life, this is, this is something that you can't get past. It's like doing something negative and you know you do something negative, but it's a biological process. So until it's not even something that you can stop, it's only something that you can recognize. So this is why you would have to have a conversation and really sit and say, well, damn, why do I want what I want? See, it, it's real simple. Why do I want what I want? Because that is a thought within itself. You know, it's not a thought. I want this. That puts you in a whole dimension. See, if you think about why you want what you want, you might figure out the, the purpose of said action and deal with the attraction or magnetization of it. However, sometimes... You be wanting to kill somebody or hurt somebody. And say, for instance, that's an emotional urge for a selfish desire. Then people was in jail for that. Like if you if you sit back and you just wish for shit and desire shit, you pass that on to your motherfucking kids. Ten times out of ten, you was passed that shit on. Because it's people who actually get shit done. The same shit you desire is the same shit that a person can go down to the state house, courthouse, file paperwork, um, fill out paperwork, fill out requirements, do something to get the same shit that a person wished for and a person desired for. And then people bring this mentality into spirituality. Now you using the Orishas to wish for shit. You using the astrology to hope for shit. And I understand because I wish for shit and I want shit too. But I also can understand the way that it, it utilizes energy that could be used to other things. Like if I want something, I could also be spending time in learning something. And I know that. So I would just pass that on. I'm going to continue. I'm going to just start from the beginning and I'm going to go into the second part. From a position of detachment. Right. And it's very important to look at yourself beyond your emotions. Because being an emotionally led person is not the direction for which the spirit goes. It's going to be so fucking hard for a person to not be emotionally led. But we start the we start the verse off nonetheless from a position of detachment. You study your emotional nature and learn about glamour, which is the aggregate or the reason for emotional reactions. It's so simple. Negative emotions is based upon things that we desire that don't come to pass. 
And instead of fixating on the fact that we didn't have to desire it in the first place, we'll fixate on the fact that it didn't come to pass. And they have conversations about what hasn't come to pass. And at the same time, it's another person waking up, making sure that what they want to come to pass is coming to pass because they're putting in the work and the effort and the energy to do so. Glamour controls the seven chakra and the full range of desires. It gives paramount importance to fulfilling desires and is judgmental in nature. Happy the soul that can fight against the beast of apocalypse, which has seven heads set against the seven steps of love. And undoubtedly, if it faithfully against each of these heads and gain the victory, it will deserve to pass one step to another, leaving the beast, beast vanquished after destroying its seven heads. Right. So what are they talking about, about this beast and these seven heads? It's a reason that people don't care about their chakras and their seven chakras because the, the chakras seem like a spiritual concept that's just talking about thin air. But then you think about the chakras aligning to the endocrine glands. Now I'm saying words. What is endocrine? What is chakras? Endocrine glands are the glands that produce hormones. Hormones regulate how you feel. If you feel horny, your body is going to produce the hormones that make you feel horny. Now, if you're in a relationship with somebody that you don't like or you ain't aligned with and they're horny and you're not horny, it's not because you hate them. It's because your body is not producing the same amount of hormones as it used to produce. Or maybe your body is producing more of that testosterone, more of that estrogen. You might say, man, I'm falling in love with this nigga. But really, your body is producing the hormones that make you feel and think that you've fallen in love. Your desires match with a nigga, match with a girl, match with a, a Benz or a lifestyle is going to produce the hormones up until it doesn't. That's the problem. Because if you get kicked out of your loft apartment, if you break up with your boyfriend, if you and your husband divorce right now, you going to be you going to be sad about it. Some of y'all going to be happy about it. But whatever the case may be, our relationships are based upon the hormonal relationship that our body has in relation to the person. What hormones does this person make me produce when I'm around them? Now, one thing is desiring a man, desiring a woman, and letting them be the prerequisite to whether your body produces endocannabinoids and opiates and hormones that produce bliss or deciding to say, man, fuck that bitch. Fuck that nigga. I'm going to fall in love with my soul. See, this is, this is what requires strength. This is what requires focus. Cause when you focus and fixate and, and, and concentrate on your soul and desire your soul, now a dusty ass nigga is not going to be a trigger to your hormones. And you got to really think about that. If a person can make me feel a certain type of way, that person have too much power over me. And now I can be mad at this person, but it's my power that I'm giving to this person. How am I going to take the power back? I have to understand that the seven chakras are real in relation to my endocrine system because my body has to produce the hormones to make me feel good. If this nigga smack me in the face, I'm not going to feel good. Now I'm producing negative hormones. But see, I can separate myself from this nigga. I can separate myself from this woman because I'm not going to say no, I really need this nigga more than I need my soul. I'm never going to say that. I'm never going to say, 
I really need this girl more than I need my soul. I'm never, ever going to say that shit. I will love a woman to my dying day, but I'm going to love my soul beyond death. Before you meet a person, you have a soul. If you're single, you have an opportunity to have a real relationship. That's unconditional because it ain't no unconditional relationship that you ain't going. Your desires is fucking you up because you think that your desires in the nigga is going to match up one day. And if it ever match up for a day, best believe motherfucker is only going to be for that day. Y'all only going to be kicking it for that day. Well, I met my man shit. The head that I was getting at the beginning of the relationship is not the head that I'm getting today. That's just the facts. Your girl not going to suck, suck your dick like she was when she was trying to get your ass. When she got your ass, she going to chill on sucking your dick the way she used to. And in my last video, I told you, not in my last, one of my previous videos, what is a relationship? A relationship is a situation where a man decides not to let go. Because we got to sit and be like, damn, she used to suck our dick clean off the bone when we first met. Now she looking at me with a fucking attitude. How that work? I've invested more energy in, in her now. When she was sucking my dick off the bone, she ain't even really know my middle name for real. She ain't even know my, my, my fucking favorite color. Girl, get comfortable with you. She stopped doing the things she used to do. That's just the facts. What's, what am I saying? If I, if I built my spiritual life on whether a bitch treated me good or not, bro, I would not be here doing this fucking video. I'll be somewhere curled up in the fetal position talking about why she don't love me. But I do not I do not use women as a source of supply of spirit. I use my my studies, my work, my ability to get stronger, my knowledge, my knowledge of self, my meditation. I feel good being me. I feel every day I wake up, I appreciate the opportunity to become a better version of myself. I atone for my past mistakes because I lived a life filled with mistakes. I lived a life filled with desires, wanting shit, wishing for shit. I spent the majority of my life doing that. And it's sad because I could have spent the majority of my time actualizing said desires through understanding who I was as an energetic being. How do I do that? Only through meditation. Glamour is treacherous blundering and boastful why does he say that the problem of glamour is found when mental illusion is intensified by desire it is illusion on the astral plane this is deep because a motherfucker gonna hear me and not really hear me and that and and if you and if you would just understand like if and I just put it on me for a second just to give it some context and let it breathe for a little bit but just think about the things that I want I can just stop wanting them I can stop desiring them because what I'm what I'm what I'm really after is an illusion. I'm I'm trying to get it to a space where everybody is like Kyrie, you the motherfucking man. You got a six pack and hey man, how you do that? Like you did a lot of shit in your life, but you managed to grow your dick, bro. Like how you do that, bro? You amazing, bro. You 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 was amazing for real, Kyrie. I love what you're doing. Everything that you're doing, that you're doing, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, boom. I'm wanting this positive response. I'm wanting to just wake up one day and have a motherfucking anaconda, right? I want everything in my life to be fucking perfect 
So that's why I'm working so hard, doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. And never once do I think that what I want is an illusion. I only think that what I want is going to be justified in something that's going to make me feel better. Something that's going to make me like be in a space of bliss. Illusion gives glamour its power of deception, controls the personality via glamour and makes glamour the authority for judging the worth of whatever is perceived. Illusion gives glamour its power of deception. We can stop there. Because an illusion is not real. An illusion is a fantasy. It's never a thing. However, glamour in combination with desires, illusion is what makes glamour feel real. So how I feel is a real thing that must be addressed, must, I must accomplish it, I must have it. And because I need it, because I want it, I never sit back and think, man, maybe what I need and want is not even real. Because if I was to think that, maybe I would do something different. Maybe I would do something better. Maybe I would actually accomplish what I set out to accomplish because I don't spend time in the emotional impulse of something. So the emotional impulse in our minds feels reasonable and rational up until we go to McDonald's and we don't go to McDonald's and say, Oh my God, please give me a double cheeseburger. I really need a double cheeseburger. My kids is hungry. But we will go to our baby dads like that. We will be crying to our baby mamas. I really need you to leave. Help me out because I, I gave you some dick six months ago. And you said you was coming now. Can you come and help me out? Can you, can you come and help me? You was coming on to me. Now can you come and pick me up? This is what we go through. We get real emotional in our relationships, but go to McDonald's and give these motherfuckers two ninety nine. Why can't we get? Why can't we be practical and logical and matter of fact in our relationships? Why do we have to be emotional in our relationships? The reason why you would have to be emotional in your relationship is more to the point of you projecting said negative emotions said desires on, on a partner to whereas you could find these energies within yourself. You could heal yourself through meditation, but you can't sit with yourself long enough to find the joy of being with yourself. So if being alone makes you unhappy, then all you have to offer another person is unhappiness. Because if I come into your world and I make you happy, that is a situation for which you owe me $59.99. Because I was birthed out of the cosmos and never, God never slowed me down upon my life and said, you're going to run into a dusty hole one day and you're supposed to make this hole happy and, and divert your purpose and plan and fixate and focus on making this hole happy. God never told nobody that. To which somebody sitting back and desiring that is not of God. To which if, if a person want to be fruitful and multiply and do good business and live a life worth living, then ain't no emotion assigned to that. Because because we could do these things at work. We do this shit at McDonald's. We catching a bus. To which when we don't have the money, when we, when we can't afford it, we just sit our ass in the house. So glamour of authority. Hold on. Let's keep going. Controls the personality via glamour. So your personality, which is a mask, is based upon how that mask look. 
So what you judge is not the qualities of a soul. See, when I talk about this soul shit and this spiritual shit, understand I'm talking light years in the fucking future. N nobody is really on this shit, bro. The shit that people is on is judging a book by a cover, reading a book, saying, I don't want to read this book and just getting another book. To which you can sit and read this book, understand this book, understand my motivations, and we could grow together. But you, you in 2023, ain't no, listen, if a motherfucker wanted to do something good in life, they wouldn't just be sitting alone by themselves because everybody need a good teammate. Everybody need a good team member. If you was that, you would be that. You would be in them situations to which when you sit back and you desire and you selfish, you don't be really doing shit. Time be passing. You don't be growing. You don't be developing. And then whenever something is unpleasant, you ready to beat somebody's ass. The more your shadow go ex unexamined, the more, the older you get, the more vicious you become, the more treacherous you become, the more blundering you become, the more boastful you become, because it's all glamour. So you can sit and think, I need to look the part. You can sit and think, I need to have the part. And understand, if you want to be light years ahead of niggas, you will understand that everything is related to the soul, the energetic, non-physical being for which you actually are, and not just you, the nigga that's standing in front of you, the woman that's standing in front of you. She's not a piece of pussy. This is not a fucking 10 inch dick because y'all use people as masturbation products. Y'all use people as uh, uh, fucking pocket rockets and fucking dildos. Because the relationship ain't a relationship until y'all fuck, correct? You don't want to really commit to the motherfucker unless you know he going to fuck you good. To which he fucking you good, you satisfied, but you hoping, you really, really hoping, you desiring that he only fucking you. This is your desire. Only to be met with heartbreak when you find out that that's some community ass dick. Good dick is community dick. Because that's how niggas is wired. We want to fuck as many girls as we possibly can if we can. To which, if you get an opportunity, you not about to change that shit. You not about to come into the cypher and say, peep this hot 16 out. And niggas going to go, ooh, no, she the one, son. She the one, son. Nah, son. I'm no longer community dick. I'm about to give her all my dick for the rest of my life. See, the only way you thinking about this shit is through your perspective, through your glamour, through your desires. And the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to get your heart broke. Unless you get with a lame ass nigga who can't get no hoes and, and you the only hoe he can get. But see, that's fine because that's your motherfucking granddaddy. Granddaddy lame as hell. But that wasn't a nigga that your grandma was getting piped out by. Your grandma was smart. Your granddaddy wasn't no pimp. See, Papa was a rolling stone. That was a small percentage. Most of our granddads went to work every fucking day. Everybody granddad worked at the factory, worked at the steel mill, worked at the fucking mechanic place. Hardworking, blue collar, lame ass niggas. They created your ass. You going to come into the glamour of things. I need a nigga like this. I need a nigga like that. And if it ain't a nigga like this, and if it ain't a nigga like that, I'm, af I'm afraid that I'm going to have to beat your ass. Make that make sense. Oh, it makes glamour the authority for judging the worth of whatever is perceived. Once again, this could go so over. This is a conversation that niggas is going to be having in the year 2525. Because the conversation you're going to get in the year 2023 is damn her ass is fat. She got a BBL. Oh, I look good for my age and weird shit like that. 
as if those are the mechanics for a healthy and happy relationship or anything to which you ain't never went to McDonald's and say, I look good. I look fly. I look fly. Can I get a motherfucking large fry? Regardless of what you look like, you go in there with four ninety nine. they give you the fry, you walk out. A relationship got the same mechanics to it. If two people can come together and say, what's your goal? See, we read each other's book. We have long conversations. But in 2023, a girl don't even want to fucking talk to you if you're not striking an emotional chord. You like a girl, you text her, she don't text back. She ain't interested. What the fuck you going to do? You just ain't nothing you can do. It's unreasonable. It's irrational. To which I'm sitting here reading the Bible, getting in tune with my. Listen, I love the women in my life. I love all women, but I do not use y'all as supply for my energetic frequency. That's why I love y'all so much that I sit here and keep it real with your ass. I sit here and tell you the truth. I ain't about to tell you that your ass don't stink because you don't wipe it. I'm not about to tell you, oh, yeah, we could just be fat and we could just eat and be cool. Nope, we're going to have to go to the gym every day. First off, before we can do anything, we're going to have to be healthy. We're going to have, like, the spirit realizes that his solar plexus chakra under the influence of glamour seems wounded by the past. In the year 2025, you'll meet a girl on the first date. In the year 2025, you'll meet a girl on the first date and she'll talk about the wounds of the past. In the year 2023, she trying to act like she ain't never had a nigga for real. Like she really can be out here dating for real and, and the facts of the wounds of the past. Like niggas be out here hurt. Mother wound. Listen, when you love a woman and and you love a woman, like you, you you like you can like really go for lames. Like some dudes do that. But say for instance, you like women that other men like. If you like women that other men like, <clears throat> that's nerve wracking, right? Niggas is shooting they shot at your girl every time she leave the house, bro. All day, every day. Whenever you not looking, whenever, like, she is constantly being bombarded. And some girls like, what you mean? It's a different conversation for different type of people, depending on where you at. But just say you a type of dude, you like certain types of girls. If you ever done that, your girl done cheated on you, bro. And that shit done fucked you up. Whenever, like, like, fuck, fuck all that. A girl going to do what she going to do. And when a girl has sex with another nigga, when she in a relationship with you, she's not factoring the psychological damage it's going to do to you. How much is going to fuck you up? And maybe she does. Maybe she knows how much is going to fuck you up. And maybe this is why she's going to do it. But understand, my brother, you was wounded by the past, bro. Like a lot of niggas that's real, like, you know, aloof and distant and weird. And, you know, they ain't comfortable with themselves because a bitch done ran roughshod over that nigga, bro. Done ran over that nigga's heart with a tractor trailer four by four, nigga. Like you could be a lame ass nigga and get with a girl and she just do you, bro. Do you win, bro? Like, listen, I'm like the nigga from goddamn. I'm Samuel Jackson and Black Snake Moan. Like, I'm, I'm, I know everything, bro. I know every time schedule, bro. Like, I, I damn near, you know, you gotta, you gotta be so open and honest with this shit, bro. Cause desires that have you going into a situation like man, woman, and love together forever because of emotions. And this bitch cheating on you. Girls like, I don't think that happened. Like, like I know the girls on my channel don't cheat on niggas, but y'all friends definitely do. Y'all be hearing the goddamn conversations. So 
All of this to say, when you realize that your solar plexus chakra is wounded, hurt, what you do? What do you do? Seems wounded by the past, but can also feel redeemed by the present. The emotional body following the lead of glamour desires external circumstances that engender this feeling of redemption. So we having a conversation in the year 2025, 2525, and it's 2023, and we talking about why your desires is not for you to find peace within yourself. Your desires is to some somehow find peace with the past of an event that didn't really happen with people who don't truly exist. To which you develop so much ambition and so much drive to be somebody to, to make it all right for emotional glamour and illusion because the only thing that could ever exist is this moment when you don't do the spiritual work see listen before i did the spiritual work i i I have (laughs) i'm a libra rising okay i'm a libra rising and the thing about my rising sign is that it attracts people of a duplicitous nature okay So my whole entire life, I've attracted people with a duplicitous nature, right? And so it's been times where I've been in relationships with women and the women have ended up pregnant and pregnant by the baby and the baby's not mine. So we do the DNA test and the baby's not mine, right? So... Like this happened three times in a row, okay? And 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 as I'm studying my chart and going over my life, I can understand. So whenever I'm dealing with people, I understand I'm dealing with duplicitous people, not because they're bad or because I'm stupid. It's because my magnetism attracts these type of people. So I can work with it now. I can understand it now. Or I could just kind of not fuck with people now because I understand the ways for which people are. And I'm saying all of this to say that I took this shit to heart like a motherfucker. Before meditation, before spiritual work, I wanted to motherfucking get right to so a motherfucker can feel me. So a motherfucker can be like, yeah, that's Kyrie. That motherfucker, yeah, he overcame that shit, man. Fuck them hoes, bro. You bigger than that or something, you know? Just like feeling like I needed to overcome some shit. And 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 and, and, it, and I'm saying this to say whatever you experience, you need to find peace with that shit. You can't you can't bring that shit into meditation. You can't bring the anger, resentment, and the wounds of a nigga doing this and that. You can't bring that shit in here. That shit don't come in here. That shit stops. It don't matter, bro. But in 2525, we might be able to have this conversation. In 2023, a motherfucker trying to get right over some past shit, overcoming some shit, and, and feeling victorious over their ex or some weird shit like that, bro. Motherfuckers ain't trying to get tuned in and tapped into who they are. So, continuing on. Verse 4 goes, All desires, and this is the part that I wanted to get to. All desires, without question, the false beliefs that lie behind glamour and give it power. All desires, except, without question, the false beliefs. So to desire something and to go after what you desire is to also accept it without questioning it and seeing the root of said desire to which you would then reorganize your energy because to live a life of redemption and to crash out and to be so lost and 
at all of the points and times in my life where I was feeling hurt by a woman, I could have tuned in and tapped into my soul. She cheated on me. At this point, I'm telling you, the more spiritual I got, I started only wanting to deal with prostitutes. I started to only want to deal with women that got fucked on a consistent basis because that's the only place I felt like I was in some form of an honest relationship. Because you ain't going to never get with a girl and she going to get into what she liked about her ex. Like, no, my ex used to pipe me out so crazy. It was just so crazy the way he used to just, his fuck style was just so amazing. He was toxic, but boy, that dick was amazing. And your dick is okay, Kyrie. Your dick is cool. You're a cool guy. Like, because when you get in real conversations with shit, that shit get awkward real fast. So this is why, like, I know it's so awkward that a woman don't really want to have it because her shit is like, I'm trying to be a good girl. I need this man to think I'm a good girl. I don't want him to think I'm like this or like that. But my thing with any person where I tell people all the time, if you can't talk about this shit, don't do it. That's why it's only like hoes is really the only way to go. Because if you're dealing with a person who's dealing with shame, like they're doing stuff and they can't actually talk about it, they're going to project that energy into the... This Everything is energy, fam. Everything is energy. So... You know what I'm saying? Stand tall on that cop. Like, my ex used to fuck the shit out of me. And that's the best sex in the world. But he toxic. So a nigga gonna have to really examine that shit and say, well, damn, bitch. I feel like you need a toxic ass nigga then. You don't need me. I'm not about to waste time and energy. See, it, it saves a lot of time and energy. Because it'd be like, you, you live in this life. You could be making decisions and choices and say, me and this nigga ran the fucking bag up. He started a logistics company. I was keeping the books. I was, I took on the financial burden and we fucking made it. But you would sit and reflect like, damn, my ex used to fuck me good as hell. Where's this nigga at though? He in a wind somewhere. But you're going to bring that energy into this relationship and we're going to normalize it because it's 2023. I'm telling you, if you ever alive and reincarnate in the year 2525 and these videos is playing and niggas is talking about this shit in mass, like, yeah, we need to stop focusing on the BBL and get into our soul. You're going to be like, damn, I remember in my previous life when this nigga was doing this fucking IG live. I remember that shit like it was yesterday. Shit like that. All desires act as though glamour were infallible. All desires act as though glamour does not lie. Desires. Like say like I desired this. So that means when I get what I desire I'm happy. So like, I know a person that want a car, right? So be like, when I get a car, I'll be happy until the car break down. Then with the car break down, then what? I guess I'll just get another car. So we, it's not to say that you're not supposed to have a car. It's supposed to get your energy in check to not need or to desire a car and to figure out how are you going to attract and magnetize cars at infinite. Being the person that even like, you can always manifest what you need. And the reality of getting a car sometimes is blocking your ability to get a car. What am I talking about? Say, for instance, you want a car and you go to the car lot and they say, all right, this car is going to cost 800. No, this car is going to cost $1,100 a month. Right. And cause it's a, it's a, it's a scat pack. It's a, it's a Hellcat, right? This car is going to cost $1,100 a month. And you make two thousand dollars a month. Your rent is a thousand dollars a month. And yo, so boom, right off the rip, you in a pickle, because you're not making enough money to pay your rent and your car note and your insurance, your food, nothing. Everything is fucked. But for for some reason, right, you start selling a little bit of pussy, right, just to make it through. But what you're doing is working, 
selling pussy, paying your car note, paying your, like everything is at zero. And you, it's a lot of people, like it's a lot of people that your mama and your daddy probably been paying a car note your whole life, right? Been paying rent your whole life. And you in your thirties and they never did shit for real. And you sat back and like, damn, niggas been paying their bills their whole life. And, and if you don't, and so what I'm trying to say is they desired that. They desired this lifestyle, kept them at zero and never thought that maybe we should just all get a fucking studio apartment or maybe black people never think about this. Maybe we should be like the other races all get a multi-family and all of the family just living here. Like everybody in the family can just live, like just come live. If you find a spot, lay your ass down, you know what I'm saying? And, and just people live here. When you get your shit together, you go out into the world. Uh, if you don't have your shit together, you come to the family house. I know Haitians that live like that. Chinese people that live like that. Mexicans live like that. Black people. You're not, you're not keeping up with the glamour of shit. Niggas looking at you crazy. Niggas still grown as fuck in high school. Like, I seen old ladies wearing Air Force Ones and wearing shit like that. Like, really keeping up with the Joneses. And it's like, I understand you got to keep up with your appearance. But if you sit back and notice, that's all motherfuckers care about in 2023. The appearances of shit. It's almost to say, like, with social media, like, the appearances of shit, if you can get a good look... Whatever is after that look be horrendous, bro. Like Facebook, I don't know if y'all ever been on Facebook. However a bitch look on Facebook, minus that shit by 15 when you see them in real life. That shit is crazy. This world is fucking crazy. People so, so caught up in what shit look like that what's behind what's looking like and the shit... Like the mental and emotional shit that people got to actually do to get to a certain level. Like that shit is not happening no more. Having a conversation yesterday about the generation gap between Gen, Gen Z and Gen X and millennials being in the middle, understanding Gen X and understanding Gen Z. But I also understand Gen X motherfuckers looking at Gen Z motherfuckers like, what the fuck? All the work we put into mental and emotional health and just going throw it out. <laughs> TikTok done took all these motherfucking souls, bro. Instagram done took all of these motherfucking souls. And you think TikTok and Instagram is dealing with the inner workings of shit? Or is they dealing with the surface level of shit? Surface level of shit for 500, Alex. All desires act as though glamour were an infallible guide or a trustworthy guide rather than something that can or should be overcome. So the trouble with this is that in reference to meditation and reference to spirituality, it sounds interesting. It sounds compelling. But when it comes to your desires, you're more prone to follow your desires than it is to get in tune with your spirit and your source. And because your spirit and your source is there and you understand it or quasi understand it, you would never think that in order for me to get in tune with myself, I have to overcome my desires and I have to get rid of these desires. No, you're going to think I have to accomplish my desires first and then I'll deal with my soul later. So in reference to your chakras, your endocrine system, you're saying that when you buy a mansion that you can't afford and bills that you can't afford or an apartment that you can't afford or a car that you can't afford, because if you could afford it, you wouldn't desire it, right? If you could afford something, you would just go to the lot, buy it and have it. But if you don't got no money to go to the lot and buy it, you would desire something over 
understanding the law of attraction, magnetizing, becoming a person who has the money to go and purchase the car and doing the things, having the connections, being the person, putting in the work to be the person that have the Lexus, to have the Tesla, you would rather desire the Tesla. In this world, regardless of what you feel, the person that works to get the Tesla is going to get the Tesla quicker than the person that desires the Tesla. And although the person that works for the Tesla is no guarantee, and the person that desires the Tesla is no guarantee, but at the both, we're all going to say the person that works for it has a better chance to get it than the person that is hoping and wishing for some shit. So in reference to what you desire, you should not look at it as something for which you should follow. You should look at it as something that you should get rid of. You should, you should rebuke it. You should hate it. You should not, you should, you should not desire shit. Cause it's only going to drive you crazy to want a Tesla and not be able to afford it. But the reality might be you can't fucking afford it. You don't need it. You desire it. You need a nigga like this. You want a thing like that. You want a little, you drive yourself crazy. And in this space of driving yourself crazy in the realms of desires, your soul sit here available right now for free regardless if you got the new place regardless if you got the new car and regardless if you got the nigga regardless 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 your soul is always there like i'm here but you would say no i got it i got it ah 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 Glamour appears attractive because it offers self-aggrandizement. Ooh, them is big words. What does aggrandizement mean? Aggrandizement. Aggrandizement is the noun form for the verb aggrandize. To increase the power or reputation of something. Glamour appears attractive because it offers to increase the power or reputation of you and it allows you to judge other people. You will continue to give glamour its power as long as you believe that it is attractive and worth maintaining. Glamour's boast of privilege is a slanderous attack on God and God's nature. For all human beings are created equal and spiritually united. If you have a specific desire, it seems as though you should follow that desire because when you get the desire, people are gonna be saying, Oh, Kyrie, you're so amazing, and, and I love you for this, and I love you for that, and oh my God, I can't believe you did that. You're so amazing. But in this moment, you could tune into your soul. In this moment, you could be on the right path, and you could take the steps necessary to reach the right path. But sometimes you think that you love. And if you low, that mean I'm high. Sometimes you think I'm low. And if I'm low, that mean you high. And all of these are a result of glamour and illusion. Because we are not the physical bodies. I know, I know, I know. I must have been a woman in a past life because I understand why you want 14 inches. But you don't understand, never mind. I'm gonna leave that conversation for another time. When y'all ready for this conversation, maybe in 2525. You imagine what you desire is going to free you and what actually is going to free you, you don't actually deal with it. You don't actually address it. We are all the same. This is why I talk shit all the time. I talk shit because I know I'm not better than nobody. I know ain't nobody better than me. 
Do you see how that work? One's in the chat. If you see how that work, you not better than nobody and nobody not better than you. We all equal. We all have spiritual power. And what we going to actually do with that power is how we utilize it. Some of us go to McDonald's, get a double cheeseburger for four ninety nine. And we don't say shit to that person. That person eat that cheeseburger and they live their life happily ever after. Somehow, some way, we be feeling like we going to have to make something happen or do something and feel something. And one day it'll be so great and amazing and maybe so, maybe not. But right now you have purpose. Right now you have purpose. Glamour disturbs and subverts even the wisdom of the soul and controls all parts of the personality. All feelings of identification with the physical body pay homage to glamour. All of these feelings based on beliefs are inconsistent with your divinity. The soul can convey divine ideas, but the person whose foundation are the feelings cause him to ignore or forget about the soul. The soul can convey divine ideas, but the person's beliefs, which are the foundation of his feelings, can cause you to ignore or forget about the soul. So in your worry, in your concern, in your disdain, you forget about your soul. You ignore your soul. That's the problem. And when you ignore your soul, that's the end of it. If you have the capacity to understand what I'm about to say, understand what I'm about to say. Whoever is angry with other people will be held captive by guilt. Whoever condemns other people will suffer self-condemnation. Here lies the wisdom of being attached from your emotions and, perce and perceiving the essential divinity within other people. Maya is a false prophet with powers of both glamour and vitality that embodies illusion. More specifically, Maya has glamour's power of deception as well as the vital energy that causes the physical body and all self images that are identified with the body to seek false form of redemption offered by glamour. Maya has the power of manifestation because it can make thoughts come down from the mind and appear outwardly as physical behavior. Maya reinforces feelings of identification with the physical body by fulfilling desires fostered by glamour. Maya encourages fantasies of using the physical body for self-glorification. Each of these fantasies contains a dream of retribution for the past. Maya gives vital energy to any strongly felt fantasy, resulting in an impulse to act out that fantasy and to resent anything that blocks its fulfillment. So when we want something and we are dealing with the blockages to what we want, we're not looking at ourselves as we're going in the wrong direction, we're looking at the block saying, what the fuck are you doing? You're in my way. I desire this nigga. I desire this woman. And your soul says, you don't need that. I desire this big house. Your soul says, you don't need that. 
I desire this scat pack. Your soul says you don't need that. And you don't. And I know it feels crazy because you want it so bad. That me telling you that you don't want it, you can't actually understand why wanting it is not going to get it. Because you can't want a cheeseburger. You could just buy it. You can't go to McDonald's and say, I want a cheeseburger. They're going to be like, all right, $1.99. And you're going to say, well, I want it. They say $1.99. You say, I want it real bad. They say $1.99. You say, I want to do a ritual. Say $1.99. I want to do a spell. $1.99. I want to do magic. $1.99. Now, is a spell, ritual, or magic bad? No, because you could have did a spell for $1.99. Not a double cheeseburger. You could do a spell to become more magnetic, more prosperous. And then as the money comes, you could take the money that comes and go buy yourself a fucking double cheeseburger. But if I'm doing a spell to get a double cheeseburger, spirit going to be like, what the fuck? What are you doing? If I'm doing a spell for love, but I'm not even lovable. I'm doing a money spell and I don't know how to, as soon as I get money, I spend it. I don't even feel good about being like, it can go so deep. And I promise you in 25, 25, niggas going to be with it. They is going to be like Maya glamour right now. Niggas is like booty hole pink, my asshole brown, like shit crazy, man. It's weird out here. Maya compels all parts of the physical body to use their strength and consciousness to act out strongly felt fantasies. I'm going to say this again. Maya compels all parts of the physical body to use their strength and consciousness to act out strongly felt fantasies. You would not value external things unless you were affected by Maya, glamour, or illusion. You would not value external things unless you were affected by Maya, glamour, and illusion. And I promise you, in 2525, we're going to come together. We're going to meditate. We're going to vibrate real high. We're going to build up our attractive force field energy. And we're going to magnetize things. We're going to be creating worlds. We're going to be doing all of this cool shit together. But right now, your girlfriend telling you, you ain't shit right now because you not helping her fulfill her weird ass desires of doing fucking shit that costs money every day. And you don't forgot the fucking money. You don't have the money. So even if you did have the money, you probably want to buy a house. You want to go spend the money that you would put a down payment on a house to go to fucking Turks and Caicos or some shit. And you like, I want to stay here. She's like, I want to travel the world. And you like, I don't want to do that. Now you an ain't shit ass nigga. Your woman do not like you, bro. Because cause you are the tool to make her feel good. But God did not make you to make no woman feel good. God made you to fulfill your destiny. Live out your purpose. Follow your path. If a month that should that should make a motherfucker feel good, but if it don't, you can't stop your purpose because a motherfucker calling you an ain't shit ass nigga, because you ain't fulfilling desires. Desires, shit that you can't even get a cheeseburger off of, a Big Mac from, but in your relationship, you supposed to be the goddamn Aladdin or some shit like that. Here is the key principle of all wisdom. Illusion operates throughout the personality. We at footnote 24. Pervading the mental body as false beliefs, the emotional body as glamour, in the vital body as Maya. So let's understand this. Mentally, we're not, the false belief is that we are the ego. That's a false belief. Tamika Johnson is a false belief. Charmaine Jones is a false belief. If your mindset 
is fixated on who you are as an ego, whether you got a nice outfit or you look good at your 10 year anniversary or some weird shit like that. You want a picket fence, you got a house mortgage, all of that shit is what that shit is, but none of that shit is consciousness. All of that is a false belief because when you die, your kids going to have that house. They're going to sell that house or they're going to live in that house for free. But you did all that. So for what? And they sell the house. Then what? Anything you thinking that you're doing here that's important, false belief. The emotional body as glamour. Feeling as though when you accomplish a false belief, you're going to feel good. You got to understand the faulty logical process of desires and emotions and trying to make it right. This is why motherfuckers be out here looking goofy, waiting for something that don't exist. It's not real. You was told that shit in movies. You, your grandma and grandpa, they damn near, they, they slept in two separate beds Set in two separate chairs. You never seen them kiss. You never seen them touch. They just took care of business. Here you are. Like why you ain't got a relationship like your grandma do? Because your grandma wasn't on no bullshit like you on bullshit. Your grandma knew how to tag them and bag them. Your grandma knew how to manage the fucking checkbook. She ain't work, but she was she she paid all the bills. Shit was in her name, though. Cause it, I'm telling you, if you get a nigga that's making twenty thousand dollars and you say let's organize this shit, let's budget. Okay, you making twenty thousand dollars? That mean that give us five dollars to spend. We gonna get ramen noodles. We gonna get Kool Aid packets, nigga. We about to do what it do, and we gonna turn this goddamn twenty into fifty. What's love got to do with that? That's real. But motherfuckers sit like now, motherfuckers sit be in like princess mode and um, soft life and hot girl summer and just all these type of modes, all these type of role models. Y'all be following women that's not even women. But that's a whole nother video. A lot of these women be men in drag. Acting like they got your best interest in heart and, and and what? Wolf in sheep's clothing. The emotional body as glamour and the vital body as Maya. This is when this is the dangerous part. You got a false belief, you got an emotional expectation, and you got spiritual mumbo jumbo. So now motherfuckers is telling you meditate is all within you. And then from there, you accomplish all you need to accomplish. And it's an easy way to be doing some shit, to get some shit. And then like not doing it because this is just who you are. I'm, I'm enlightening you to say you should meditate and you might not get shit out of it besides the proper hormonal balance that you need to have homeostasis to receive the messages from your soul. And I'm saying that nobody can give you that. No man, no woman, no guru, no nothing. And even if you don't manifest shit from it, at least you will have a sense of self. And a sense of self is invaluable. It's like having a hand. It's like having a leg. How much money a nigga got to charge you to cut your fucking leg off? Don't nobody want to be walking around this bitch with no legs. So why you want to be out this bitch with no soul for no reason? For no reason. Understanding this principle implies deeply distrusting all reactions of the personality to life and circumstance. So you can't say Oh, I'm so fucked up because I don't have it like he have it because we is all created equal spiritually. 
And if your situation ain't right and exact, you haven't been dealing with your soul. And maybe the person across the street from you have been. How the fuck you supposed to know? You ain't in the house with them. You ain't meditating with them. You don't know what the fuck they doing. You need to be concerned with what you got going on. So deeply distrusting all reactions to the personality, to life and circumstance is where you start off at. You can't look at your life and say, well, I got it fucked up because X, Y, Z, or I got it good because X, Y, Z. You distrust all of that shit. And this is a conversation that we could only have in the year 2525. Because right now, people is really feeling like the economy is bad. They ain't got no money. They ain't got this. They ain't got that. They ain't got this. And it's just like, whatever. Because illusion cannot even be recognized as illusion without the illumination of the soul. This is one of the best quotes that I've ever heard in my life. It makes so much sense to me. That illusion cannot even be recognized as illusion until you be doing the soul work, the meditation work to find yourself. So it's like, well, will I manifest? Will I meet a good guy? Will I have enough money to pay my bills? I don't know, but you won't be looking at you won't be looking at this bitch from a false perspective. You will be able to see the illusion for what it is. You will see people being so full of shit that you can't never take. Listen, I, I don't never really engage with people no more. Once I feel like you full of shit, I'm not about, I don't, I'm not at the space to tell you that you full of shit. I'm allow you to keep doing your thing. I'm gonna allow you to keep crashing out. Because I'm not going to assume that your soul is not talking to you and telling you to, to crash out or not to. Maybe that's what your soul wants. But at the end of the day, what's right and exact is mutual understanding. A motherfucker trying to get over you is just a motherfucker trying to get over on you. A motherfucker using you is just a motherfucker using you. And then you will understand if you will go through this video again, you will start to understand, well, why she treat me like that? Because she trying to redeem some some old shit, make the old shit right through you on some weird shit. And she not even seeing you for you and your purpose. She's seeing you through the filter of making the past right or some weird shit. She looking for a man to make her happy. And God ain't even never make nobody to make you happy besides your damn self. God made one person to make you happy. And that's you, bitch. God ain't make no man to make you happy. It's no man out there. You can make your own self happy by doing this soul work. And if you don't do the soul work, you're going to be living in a world of illusion Thinking it's a nigga that God specifically made to be making Charmaine happy. And the nigga come into your life like, shit, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And you like, hmm. Well, what you trying to do for me? I said, I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that, bitch. I'm trying to do this and do that. You want to take part in it? You want parts? Like, you trying to help out? You trying to, you know... Throw an extra leg in this bitch? Like, what you going to do? Oh, you you having the hot girl summer soft life? You in your hot girl summer soft life era? Got it. Make, got you. So, cool. You use the niggas, babe. Oh, got you. Cool. I'm glad we broke the ice. Ignorance of the ways of the soul leads to illusion. Once caught in the net of illusion, it is extremely hard to break through it. It is difficult to recognize an illusion for having created it. The mind cannot be aware of it. So if you tell yourself, I'm supposed to have this, your mind say, you're supposed to have this, bitch. And you're like, right, I'm supposed to have this. And you'd be so motivated. You never thought like, my mind's playing tricks on me. You thought what you thought was correct. It's not correct if it leads to negative emotions. 
If you have a negative emotions, it's a false belief that you believe it to be real and putting spiritual energy on top of it. So when I see people who create negative circumstances in their life, these are the most powerful people on the planet because they do not want to have the negative circumstances in their life, but they can't seem to stop the negativity to keep coming and coming and coming and coming. It keep coming because they keep attracting that shit because they keep wanting shit and they keep desiring shit. They keep focusing on the external and they never sit with themselves and they soul. Cause I'm going to read this and I'm, and it's going to explain to you why once caught in the net of illusion, it is extremely hard to break through it. It is difficult to recognize an illusion for having created it. The mind cannot be aware of it. Because illusion cannot even be recognized as illusion without the illumination of the soul. So you might be wondering how you're going to navigate through life and keep going through the illusion to navigate it. But you need to go into self to begin to see the ways for which you are magnetizing or attracting or creating fucked up shit for you so you can stop doing it, get out your own way, live in your purpose and watch everything work out for you however it's supposed to work out. Because when you take care of your spiritual and divine responsibilities, this is called purpose. Everything works out. We don't know how it does. We don't know how it works out. We just know that it does. So deeply distrust all reactions to the personality, to life and circumstance because illusion, because you might be tripping off of something that's not real. You could be mad about something that's not real. You could be salty about something that's not real. And you might not see it to be not real because you haven't done the meditation. You haven't done the soul work. So if you're desiring something specifically, it's all good. You may or may not get it, but desire your soul to increase your chances to get it. And if you don't get what you specifically want, Whatever your soul has for you is more in alignment with what you should have. Hopefully this message made sense. It resonated with you and it was something that you needed to assist in your spiritual journey and spiritual development. I'm the Hood Mystic and let y'all know this is the weekend. So we do have the deals going at whiterabbitsite.com. Be sure to tap in with me and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.